join in expressing our grief at Diana's loss and gratitude for her all too short life. The movie begins with Queen Elizabeth II watching the news about the election day of 1997 while being painted for an official portrait. She seems wary of the leading Prime Minister candidate Tony Blair, who aims to modernize the country, and says that she invades the artists for being able to vote, unlike her. The next morning, the Queen wakes up to the news that Blair has won the election. Oh, I smell drama coming. Later that day, the Queen's private secretary, Robin, informs her that Blair is on the way. He says that Blair's background is rather conservative, but his plans to modernize the country are quite radical, and he is married to a known anti-monarchist. Meanwhile, Blair arrives at the palace with his wife, Cherie. He seems rather nervous to meet the Queen one-on-one -on -one as a prime minister, but who wouldn't? The couple is instructed on how to behave while in the presence of the Queen before Blair is escorted to the room to meet her. They exchange pleasantries before moving on with the ceremonial custom, which is for the Queen to ask Blair to form a government under her name and for Blair to accept by kissing her hand. Afterwards, Sherry is invited in and exchanges small talk with the Queen before Robin comes to whisper something to the Queen. She then excuses herself to take care of the matter, which Sherry thinks has to do with Princess Diana. At the time, Diana has already divorced Prince Charles and his dating film producer, Dodie Alfade. However, every single action she makes is followed by the media, and she is often caught in controversies and criticism while her privacy has become non-existent. Poor woman, she really did nothing wrong. On the evening of 30 August 1997, Diana is on a visit to Paris with Dodie when the infamous car crash happens. Robin hears the news at midnight and immediately heads to the estate to inform the Queen of the accident. Blair is also informed and immediately turns on the TV to watch the news. In the Baumroll estate, where the royals spend their summers, the Queen along with her husband Philip and her mother also watch the news as Diana is still being treated for her injuries. Charles enters the room and says that he has arranged a private jet to take him to Paris immediately. However, the Queen argues with his decision, thinking that it's too extravagant to use a private jet and they can get criticized for it. That is until they receive news of Diana's death, and after Charles breaks the news to his sons, the Queen agrees to take Diana's body home in one of their private jets. It seems tough to have to keep a balance between private and political matters, though it seems like Philip and the Queen's sister never liked Diana in the first place. Meanwhile, Blair gets on a call with his director of communications, Alastair Campbell, who is already preparing Blair's speech for the morning. In the morning, he is practicing the speech with Alastair who implies that the royal family might be behind Diana's accident, which Blair dismisses. He then calls the Queen to ask if she plans to make a statement and also about Diana's funeral plans. The Queen insists that no royal member shall make a public statement and that Diana's family wishes for her funeral to be private. However, Blair thinks that it's a bad decision since Diana is so loved by the people of Britain. Later during Blair's speech, Alastair describes Diana as the people's princess, and the term catches on with the masses. The whole country is in grief for the next few days, with people leaving tributes and flowers in memory of Diana at the Buckingham and Kensington palaces. After the speech, Blair is contacted by Lord Chamberlain Airely, who is in charge of Diana's funeral. He wants to hold a meeting with representatives related to Diana to discuss the funeral plans. Meanwhile, Charles arrives at the hospital in Paris to bring Diana's body back to London, insisting that her coffin be adorned with the royal standard. He is greeted at the airport by Blair and agrees that a private funeral is too old-fashioned for the current public atmosphere. The next morning, Alastair returns from the funeral meeting bewildered by the amount of detail they needed to discuss for the funeral. It seems like they agreed to do a public funeral after all, which I think is definitely more appropriate for a figure like Diana. The press also seems to be praising Blair for being empathetic of Diana's death compared to the royals. In the estate, the Queen is musing over Philip taking their grandchildren to hunt so soon after their mother's death. But the Queen Mother assures her that some time in nature would do them well. I actually agree with her, poor kids. Then, Robin enters the room to inform the Queen about the public funeral plans decided in this morning's meeting. They are to use the protocols planned in the event of the Queen Mother's death, but with adjustments that make the funeral more modern. 
Though the queen is saddened by Diana's death, this change of plans makes her wary as it's far from the customs that she's been brought up on all her life. I can't imagine being in her position at the time. Later, Blair receives a call from Charles' secretary, which implies that the prince is on Blair's side. Blair's staff thinks that Charles is buttering up to him because he's afraid of being killed if the public hates the royals too much. I don't know if the prince's sentiments are genuine or political either. Charles' band returns to the estate to join the queen who's driving to the hills to hunt with her grandchildren. On their way, Charles tells her about his worries about being the public's enemy, which upsets the queen who decides to walk back to the estate. That night, the queen tells Philip that they might have made the wrong decision in ostracizing Diana, even though they were the ones who suggested the marriage in the beginning. In the morning, Blair watches the news that shows the public's disdain for the royal family's silence on Diana's death and demands a flag to be flown at half-mast above the Buckingham Palace. After Blair suggests flying a flag there, Philip and the Queen Mother think that it's a ridiculous idea since the royal standard flag is only flown there to indicate the monarch's presence, despite Charles suggesting that they fly the Union Jack flag instead. Gosh, they're all so uptight. In Blair's house, Cherry suggests that the rising tension among the citizens would bring about the downfall of the royals, which pleases her as she's an anti-monarchist. However, Blair thinks that the Queen is an important and respectable figure, and that the nation doesn't want a Republican England. Cherry's sentiment is also felt by his staff, which think that the people had voted for him by a landslide because they want a big change in the country. I feel like Blair is re-evaluating his values because of this incident. And so, Blair calls the Balmoral estate to suggest the Queen return to London and fly a Union Jack flag at half-mast above Buckingham Palace. The Queen rejects the idea, preferring to tend to grandchildren's grief in the privacy of the estate rather than appease the public and the media. After the call, Blair immediately calls Robin who explains that the Queen's behavior is most likely due to her shock at the public's backlash. Yeah, I don't think she's intentionally being insensitive, to be honest. Blair ends up agreeing to help with pushing down the negative headlines being pushed by the tabloids. Diana's memorial is being aired live on TV. The Queen watches as the people say that the royals have made a mistake in their handling of Diana's death. Philip comes in all upset about the arrangement for Diana's funeral, which is to be attended by a lot of celebrities. I honestly don't understand why he's so upset about this. In the morning, the headlines are worse than ever against the Queen, prompting Blair to call the Queen to tell her about the national poll of the people's opinion of the royal family. 70% of people feel that the royal's inaction is hurting the monarch's standing, and 25% of people agree that the monarch should be abolished entirely. That's very concerning news for the queen, I'm sure. This causes the queen to discuss Blair's suggested actions, which are to return to Buckingham Palace as soon as possible, fly the flag at half-mast, attend Diane's funeral, and give a memorial speech that will be televised live throughout the nation and the world. It seems like other members of the government and royal institution also agree with Blair's suggestion, and the queen feels like her people have changed from what she used to know. Well, she has been queen for about 50 years at that point. I think it's inevitable for things to have changed. After some consideration, the queen decides that her family should return to London and follow all of Blair's suggestions after all. She also orders some of the floral tributes from the palaces to be brought to Balmoral slightly decreasing the tension from the public, she finally flies to London, with the tabloids regarding the Queen to have submitted to Blair. Ouch, that's pretty harsh. The Queen arrives at Buckingham Palace, which is packed with mourners and decides to walk amongst the people. The last time this happened was when the Second World War ended. What a historic moment. Even though it seems that tensions have eased and her people still regard her highly as their Queen, the Queen also sees some comments left with the flowers that show hate and suspicion towards the royal family. Meanwhile, at Blair's office, he and his staff are watching the live broadcast of the Queen as Alastair gives Blair a copy of the Queen's planned speech that he has revised. Alastair then makes some snarky comments criticizing the Queen, which causes Blair to get upset. He thinks that the Queen has been doing her duty very well throughout her reign, and that her mistakes that past week have been due to grief and shock and the values that she was raised on. Later, the Queen finally makes a memorial speech for Diana, televised live throughout the world as was suggested. Her people listen intently as she speaks of Diana's life and legacy, 
Even saying that Diana is an exceptional and gifted human being, Blair watches proudly from his home to the bewilderment of Sherry, who says that he has changed his modernist views quite drastically in the past week. Eventually, Diana's funeral is held at Westminster Abbey, attended by the royal family amongst other guests. Two months pass since the funeral, and Blair finally has his first chance to speak directly with the Queen since then. He comes to the palace for a weekly meeting, congratulating her on her successful diplomacy visits to several countries that summer. The Queen seems resigned, saying that the events following Diana's death have been humiliating for her and the royals. She suggests that Blair is empathetic towards her at the time because he fears that he will be the next target if the people manage to abolish the monarch. Wow, that's a low blow. However, the Queen realizes that times have changed, and so have her people which makes her believe that she should modernize herself. The movie ends with the two strolling in the gardens, talking about their shared duties for the nation. I would highly recommend people watch this movie because it gives you another, more private perspective of the events following Diana's death. It definitely humanizes how I see the royals, though true or not, you should decide for yourself. Rest in peace Queen Elizabeth. Please don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe. Comment below what you want to see us work on next.